This asset has always performed well. That's why it is called king of metals. The price of this asset class has always shot up at the time of volatility. When and how an asset class is to be played out in our portfolio, we have to invest. It matters a lot in wealth creation journey. Some assets are good in creating value. Some assets are good in preserving the wealth that you have created. Hello everyone, welcome to Kirti Swinfo NRI community. I'm CS Kirtana. I live in Dubai and I run the consultancy of firm which is specialized in NRI services. I have done my CS from India, SEMA strategic level from UK. I am also a SEBI registered overseas MFT. Every week, I bring and explain a video on various topics related to NRI issues in this channel. If you are looking for finance, tax, FEMA and investment topics, related to NRIs, please, please subscribe this channel. This video is brought by The Consultancy, an initiative of Kirtiswinfo. Here we are assisting NRIs all over the globe in tax FEMA as well as investment through mutual funds in Indian equity. In case if you want to book an appointment, please use the link in the description. Today in this video, I am going to discuss about an important asset class which is everybody's favorite. To know what it is, how to invest in it, what are the advantages, disadvantages associated with each form of investing? Watch this video till the end. So let's begin. Whenever uncertainty has hit the economic landscape, this asset has always performed well. That's why it is called king of metals. Be it the collapse of FTX which had shaken the entire crypto industry or earlier Russia-Ukraine war which has pushed the inflation even higher or even sticky inflation which we witnessed after COVID. The price of this asset class has always shot up at the time of volatility. If the real value of the money starts eroding, we start seeing the demand for this metal. Because still it is considered as store of value given its limited supply and global acceptance. Not only retail investors, even central banks are adding the stockpiles of this metal. Yes, you guessed it right. I'm talking about gold. As per World Council data, even central banks have added another 39 tons in the beginning of 2024. In 2023, the purchase of gold by the central banks touched 1037 tons. The rally is actually attributable to confluence of many factors such as geopolitical tensions, Fed interest rate hike, dollar index gaining value, sticky inflation, etc. Now let's analyze as an asset class why gold has this kind of relevance. As an RI, how can you purchase gold and why it is a must have in everybody's portfolio. Third one, what are the various forms of investing in gold and what are the advantages and disadvantages associated with each form. Let's first look at as an asset class why gold has so much of relevance. Gold has always helped in preserving wealth. Look at this graph. In last 20 years, the graph is just moving upward. There are some temporary ups and downs in between, but overall it is facing upward. That's why there is no value dip in the long run. It acted as a store of value. It preserved the value. When and how an asset class is to be played out in our portfolio, we have to invest. It matters a lot in wealth creation journey. Because some assets are good in creating value, some assets are good in preserving the wealth that you have created. So as I mentioned, gold is an excellent choice for preserving the wealth. But if it is not giving any return after we buy and it is just remaining as an unproductive asset, it's of no use, right? Then what is the real value of this asset class? Primarily, it is for diversification or hedging purpose. If you keep 10 to 20% exposure to the gold, it always helps a lot in mitigating the risk by bringing the much needed balance to your portfolio. So the purpose here is not generating a return but to have a stability, balance or diversification strategy. In 2008 crisis, when the Sensex had crushed by 55%, gold had climbed up by 29%. Whether gold is an effective hedge against inflation, it is still a debatable question. But gold has proven itself over time and again as an effective hedge against Systematic risk in equity market. What is systematic risk? I'm sure you're thinking. Systematic risk means which is an inherent risk which is prevailing in the 
system of financial market means this beta always exist because of the volatility and many other factors even during covid times the price of the gold shot up by 19% so whether it is fear of rising public debt or instability in equity market or political instability uncertainty trade wars which are beyond the point of our predictions if equity market stumbles it is this asset class gold which offers buffer or support at that point now that you have already understood why you have to have exposure to the gold in your portfolio the next question is how to invest in gold especially as an nri an nri is permitted to invest in various forms of gold you can invest how is the only one choice that you should make since every form of holding comes with its own cost and benefits so let's delve into this in detail let's start with physical gold we indians love physical gold given our cultural background and the family functions festive season gold is definitely an important part of all the celebrations right so the interest in this asset class never vanishes obviously we think of physical gold when we want to buy gold but when we are buying this ornaments we are talking about 22 carat purity of 91 92% there is market price making charges wastage gst of 3% plus 5% of making charge this is adding up to the total cost i am taking indian context whereas here in dubai it is actually making charge you can reduce it by bargaining so it is little cheaper here but once you buy you also need to have a storage cost that is the locker charges for its safety if you ever want to sell then you won't be able to get the full appreciation in the value that has happened because usually whenever you go to the shopkeeper for selling he will always have a spread of 1 and 1/2 to 2% so this is a sad reality when you are thinking of golden ornaments buy it only if it is necessary for your consumption or personal use not as an investment now if you have bought gold physical gold as an nri and you want to take it to india when you visit there are two important custom rules you should be aware of for gold ornaments there are certain limits if you have stayed abroad for more than one year then you can take gold subject to certain limit again this duty free limit is depending upon the gender for female passenger it is 40 g with the value cap of 1 lakh rupees for male the value cap is 50000 rupees and 20 g please consider the value cap here because if the value of the gold has exceeded that then it might attract the custom duty so first understand the quantity of the gold and how much it is worth of this limit is also applicable to the children in your family as per their gender what about the gold bars and the coins if you can declare it as an imported baggage at the time of arrival or after you have arrived within 15 days of arrival making the declaration with the custom department then there is little concession available so the rule is little liberal it says any indian passport holder or a person of indian origin that means even ocis can carry up to 1 kg gold availing concessional duty that means duty stands reduced in all other normal circumstances the duty is 38.5 on the gold bars and the coins if this is availed then you are going to pay 10% basic custom duty 5% agriculture and infrastructure development cess uh, that is applicable and remember keep an eye on the budget this time because this limit might be changed in the coming budget remember this rule is applicable for those who have stayed abroad for more than 6 months So now as an NRA if you have bought gold and intending to take that back home to India what is the custom limit you have understood most of the NRAs also keep asking me about SGB or the sovereign gold bonds which are issued by RBI so let me tell you in the beginning itself SGB is not at all an option for NRAs these are the bonds which are issued by rbi under gold monetizing scheme so people are encouraged to invest in gold in electronic form and this return of 2 and 1/2% also made it very attractive but the disappointing factor is rbi or fema doesn't allow nris to take exposure for gold in the form of sgbs because the scheme was primarily intending to encourage residents not nris 
and to discourage the physical form of consumption. If NRIs are allowed, then it puts pressure on the foreign exchange reserve. The physical gold import never decreases. So remember, if you had already started investing in SGB as resident and then you became NRI, you can continue to hold till the maturity, but no fresh investment in your tax status as an RA can be made. Now, what are the other options to invest in gold where probably you can participate in gold price appreciation without worrying about the storage cost or making charges, etc. These are the choices. First one is gold ETF. These are the instruments which are traded in stock exchanges. So it is liquid means you will be able to sell whenever you want. This liquidity is so important criteria while buying any asset class just like profitability. Each unit of the gold ETF represents a particular amount of gold. That means to that extent maybe it is 10 gram or 50 grams you have taken exposure to the gold by buying ETF. Just have a look at Aditya Birla or SBI gold ETF. They have really delivered excellent return so considering the expense ratio one to five years of performance or the CAGR you can choose as NRI what you need is a DMAT account with any registered broker then you can go and buy gold ETF the next form where you can probably have an exposure to gold is gold mutual funds what if you don't have DMAT account and still want to hold gold in electronic form? Then gold mutual fund is your option. But please note that expense ratio is going to be a little higher because it's not a passive mode, it's a little active mode, right? Gold mutual funds typically they invest in gold ETFs or in the companies those are into this one or another form of gold business. Maybe it is gold mining, production, marketing, selling, etc. So this also gives you low cost of acquisition, high liquidity and you have flexibility to sell whenever you want. You can either buy it directly from the fund houses or you can choose it via any distributor. The next last category is e-gold. It's a very unique product launched by National Spot Exchange Limited. Here they are holding physical gold on behalf of you and allow investors to hold electronically. Using the DMAT account, you can buy and sell just like shares in NSE. You know, this is a trading platform and all the transactions are reflected in your NSE's DMAT account. So you can start buying from any smaller denomination starting from 1 gram, 2 gram, 3 gram, which is of your choice. T plus 2 days, transaction is executed, it is credited to your DMAT account. The main advantage here is you don't have any purity concern. Whenever you want to buy, you buy. Whenever you want to sell, you have sold. And another thing is, the price discovery is happening by the market forces, demand and supply. There is a transparency in pricing. Unlike physical gold, you just realize at the point of sale that, you know, somebody is giving you less price, but you feel so helpless because this buying spread is always kept by the shopkeepers. This doesn't happen at the time of sale if you have an exposure to e-gold. Because you know the price is this and you're going to execute the transaction at that X amount. So in this e-gold category, what I loved is transparency in pricing. But one of the disadvantage here is storage cost of 60 paisa per unit per month you are going to incur. Because I have already said that it's going to be backed up by the physical gold purchase, right? But if you want to take delivery at some point and you want to convert that to physical gold, by redeeming this e-gold units, you can do so. It attracts capital gain, taxes as well as conversion charges. But it is an excellent choice if you want to buy gold in future. Maybe it is for marriage or for anything. You can start building the position in the asset class through e-gold. And you can go and buy the ornament or anything that of your choice at that time without worrying about the purity or the market price. Dear viewers, and let me tell you, I have specifically excluded digital gold here since I believe that without compliance and regulation investment in anything is just a matter of belief or trust and it can turn really costly sometimes. This digital gold they are outside the purview of regulations of SEBI and RBI. That's the reason I have deliberately not included it while talking about the form of investing in gold. Hope you have learned something new today in this video. I'll see you again with another topic next week. Till then, bye-bye.